Senator Hyde Smith. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to call up my amendment, Amendment Number 61. It's straightforward. It can be adopted by voice vote. My amendment simply reemphasizes current law and directs the Department of Interior to comply with current law. Executive Order 14008 issued on January the 27th, 2021, directed the Secretary of Interior to pause new oil and natural gas leases on federal lands or in offshore waters, the Secretary acted accordingly. However, the Outer Continental Shelf Lands Act does not grant specific authority to a president to pause offshore oil and gas leases. The Mineral Leasing Act, which governs leases on energy producing lands onshore, does not provide such authority. In addition, the Administrative Procedure Act requires executive agencies to engage in reasoned decision-making. Decision in this case, there was none. No rationale whatsoever was provided for departing from the requirements under current law. A command in an executive order does not exempt agencies from complying with the reasoned decision-making requirement of the Administrative Procedures Act. In fact, a United States District Court judge found that this administration clearly exceeded its constitutional and statutory authority in halting new oil and gas leases. Thirteen states, Louisiana, Alabama, Alaska, Arkansas, Georgia, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Texas, Utah, and West Virginia joined in this lawsuit against the Department of Interior. A third of the members on this committee represent those states. My amendment simply reinstates the court's findings, directs the Interior Department to resume oil and gas leases immediately as directed by the court, and requires the department to provide a status report to Congress on the development of the 2022 through 2027 oil and gas leasing program in which another requirement under law is currently standing. Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to approve this amendment by voice vote, but if there is any objection, I request a roll call vote. And I encourage my colleagues to support this amendment. Comments, discussion? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Chairman. Oh, go ahead. I, Senator I think there's been a lot of hyperbole about this pause. I, I don't know, I can't speak for other states, but our production is completely rebounded to pre-pandemic levels in New Mexico. I do think it's appropriate for the administration to take a step back and look at other values on our public lands. There are a lot of places that we sure as hell shouldn't be drilling because they're special and they uh, have other values in it uh, in addition to their energy values. So I, I just think this amendment sends the wrong, uh, the wrong message and uh, because of that I will object to it. Well, Mr. Chairman, I, I strongly support this amendment. A federal court has found President Biden's leasing ban to be illegal. The, the court has directed the department to resume leasing immediately. Uh, it's been about a month since that court decision, and we still have no federal oil and, and gas lease sales on the horizon. The Biden administration claims that its leasing ban will result in no immediate harm. To date, states in the West along the Gulf Coast and Alaska have lost an estimated $200 million in revenue due to the postponed lease sales. In the West, we rely on the revenues to fund the K-12 education and other essential services. I support the amendment and encourage all my colleagues to do the same. Mr. 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 Chairman, Hoven. yeah, just in the interest of expediency, uh, I'll comment on this one as well because I intended to bring up uh, my uh, amendment, Hoven number 68, which in essence requires the Interior Secretary to, to continue onshore oil and gas leases in accordance with Section 17 of the Mineral Leasing Act. So it's very similar to this one, and, and I would make the same points as both Senator Hyde-Smith and Senator Brasso have made. And I would add, consumers are paying a lot more at the pump for gasoline. Gas prices are going up, and so it's not only, we're not only making consumers pay more, we're increasing our reliance on foreign oil. OPEC and other places. So we need to end this moratorium and get going. We've proven many times over that we can develop energy on federal lands and do it safely and with good environmental stewardship. Is, is the senator suggesting that the recent rise in gas prices is due to a pause in future leases on federal lands? It certainly has an impact in terms of demand and supply. If you find ways to restrict the domestic supply over time, it leads to 
uh, higher prices, and it's both a function of what we produce now and what we anticipate we're going to produce in the future. Senator Henry. I, I would just point out that current production in my state is at record levels, so tying gas prices to production uh, when production is at record levels is absurd. And, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would point out that production in our state has declined from 1.5 million barrels a day down to closer to 1.1 million barrels a day. So what is uh, applying in your state isn't necessarily the same in every other state. Senator Murkowski. Mr. Chairman, I would suggest this is, this is a simple matter of the administration needs to follow the law. <laughs>